The Lotus Esprit Turbo is what we are talking about today. And that was a very interesting car. Obviously, the original Lotus Esprit was first seen by the public in 1975 on the Paris Motor Show and was a very striking mid-engine two-seater sports car. Wedge-shaped, had a fiberglass body, uh, it weighed less than 1,000 kilograms. Uh, Colin Chapman was uh, very particular about his uh, weight of his cars and it handled superbly. There was just one little issue. Engine was a bit on the weak side. It was a four-cylinder normal aspirated engine, developed 160 horsepower in Europe, 140 in the US. And that was just didn't felt quite enough, even at the time. So what they did, they eventually decided to slap a turbo on it. That didn't quite work out either, so they enlarged the engine. Engine was now a 2.2 liter engine. It had a wet sump. They uh, made some changes to the body, Just minor changes, make it a little bit more aerodynamic. It had uh, fancy Esprit decals on nose and sides. And it had bigger, i.e. 15 inch alloy wheels. And that was the Turbo S3 Turbo, came out in 1981. And there is a kit of it, which came out by the fine folks over at Monogram. It's right next to me, and I think we should have a look at it. Hello, and welcome to Model Kit Beginner. As you just heard, we have a look at this particular kit. There it is. It bumped around a bit because it's not today's kit, it's also not yesterday's. It has some age to it. You just heard the car came out in 1981. The kit didn't come out much later. Well, how much later? We'll have a look at that in a minute. But uh, very excited to have that. Uh, got that from my South African drug dealer. Drug dealer? Don't cancel me, YouTube. And uh, got that uh, gladly from him at a reasonable price. And I am certainly love the Lotus Esprit for several reasons. We all remember James Bond, a spy who loved me. 82, 83, round by them that day. That car was uh, in the movie, which is fantastic. So we'll have a look what's in the car, what's in the box, what uh, Monogram gave us here. But before we do that, let's have a quick check on the history. I'll see you there. And here we are with the uh, Lotus Esprit Turbo, as we will see it on uh, Scalemates. Scalemates is obviously a database where lots of modelers enter their models and use it as a database for their model kits, paints, whatever. If you haven't looked at it, I highly recommend it. Scalemates.com. Right, and we will see here that this kit came out in 1990. And it really did. 1990 was the first time we will have a look at the Lotus Esprit. Then there were some, uh, now also in 1919, uh, this box came out, which was a monogram and Hasegawa connective uh, a, a kit, right about there, also 1990. And then we had 1991, right over here, 1994, right over here, monogram. And then the latest one was the monogram here, I think 1995. Let's have a look. 95, here it is. There's the Lotus Esprit Sport 300 basically the same kind of design and that was the latest iteration of this particular box art monogram obviously shortly after ceased to exist you see it has the lotus sign on it which actually mine doesn't and uh, so it is uh, properly licensed if you want so but we're going to have a look at this one and in order to do and have a look what is in this particular box we will pop it on the bench i'll see you down on the bench So here we are with uh, the exotic car series from Monogramma and this time it is the Lotus Esprit Turbo. Let's have a quick look at the box shot. On the side you see how it's built up, the engine actually very nicely done and on this side gives you a little bit about the car, different languages and uh, so that's about it. Let's open it up. Right. Oh, 
you hate that when you see that transparent pass I just thrown in. No plastic around it. Yeah, that is just so inconsiderate. Unbelievable. Anyway, here is the plastic. There's the crow. There are tyres. Instruction booklets, which we're going to have a look just now. We have the uh, decals. I'm going to have a look at that just now as well. And a broken part from the chrome tree, which was also just in there loosely. That's it. We have everything out. So as we do, let's have a quick look at the instruction sheet. Lotus Esprit Turbo US version gives you the color call out right here at the bottom. And then it starts. Just have a look if I can see spruce somewhere. No, no spruce. Cannot check the spruce. It starts, it, it is a kind of a wide format instruction sheet. It starts with the engine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a quite, it's quite an intricate engine to build. Then we get to the chassis right over here. Transverse box, front spring, forward cross frame right over here. So this is all frame construction, then the engine gets in, then we get to the wheels. From the wheels move over to wheel carrier suspension arm right over here. We are here right over here with the air cleaner. We have the header tank uh, cap, the header tank right over here. Diffuser pipes, exhaust pipes, how everything gets together. It actually looks quite an interesting and intricate kit. It's not just couple of parts run together for sure. Then uh, the body itself. Instrument panel, we'll have a look at that in detail just now when we have a look at the plastic. We have the instruments right over here, kind of pilot style as it was very, very in vogue in those days. Console and everything is in one piece and gets set into the inside of the car. Here we have the Leather seats right over here. We turn around our paper. We go to the radiator, which is obviously in front. Engine is a mid engine, so it's behind the driver's compartment. Lower lights, uh, bulkhead windows, which we already have seen the scratched up. Um, mirror, etc. Sunroof. Got a sunroof? All right. Sunroof right over here. Uh, front under shield splitter spoiler as we would call it uh, rear body part right over here that goes on there and we have the uh, rocker right over here once then you marry these parts together get the last uh, part, few windows in here we have the wing right over here gets on and then we have uh, engine cover and uh, the engine flap hood whatever you want to call it uh, with different support rods and the mirrors right over here so as we can see from the instruction sheet this is not a simple kit a complicated kit by any stretch of the imagination but it's not just a slap together standard monogram kit it actually has a uh, quite a bit of detail in it. What it doesn't have is the famous turbo stripes. This is all what you get on de decals. The Esprit and Lotus, a couple of signs for the engine bay, and that's about it. So if you want to put stripes on it, you're on your own. Which is the problem, I guess. Then, as we have seen already, very sad state of affairs here. We have windows which are not in plastic. I don't get that. If it came from the manufacturer, or I mean, why would the guy I bought it from take out the transparent parts and not take out the normal plastic parts and then just chuck them in without the plastic? It must have come from the manufacturer like that. 
Anyway, here it is, as you can imagine. It's actually not thick, it's quite thin and would be quite nice, but it needs a polish. It certainly needs a polish and we can only but hope that we get all the nicks out of here. Right, then we have chrome parts, or plated parts if you want, sir. Uh, we have the wheels, some engine parts, mirrors, lights. So what do you expect from a car? From a 81 car, yeah, they weren't chrome laden by then anymore at all. Then we have the tires. Tires are the on the sprue type, not my favorite type. Let's see if we find some branding on there. No, we, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Let's put that in here, and maybe you can see it as well. Oh, it took me a while. Hey, you see, this Michelin. Michelin tires, tires are rough. They're very hard and they certainly need a very thorough cleanup. And uh, the tread doesn't look very deep, so you must be careful when you do your very thorough cleanup, otherwise, you have slicks. Front tires and rear tires were actually a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. You might get away with some proper cleaning there. Easier. Right, then we have the plastic itself, right over here. Let's grab a pair of scissors. Plastic feels thin. Really thin. But we managed. Here we go, let's get the parts out. Some loose parts here as well. Right, and let's just put some stuff to one side so we don't have everything cluttering the bench. Right, here we are. This looks like the rear side of the seat right over here yeah then we have probably part of the engine compartment i would assume this looks like the base of the console here you go and then some other parts on the sprue we have certainly the hood now the glass comes on, we have the rear bumper assembly right over here, then a couple of suspension and frame parts, who all look in some need of cleanup. Not horrible, but certainly not great. And here we go, we seem to have the doors right over here other parts wheel parts this looks like yeah it is a spoiler rear spoiler right over here here we have the uh, sun uh, covers right over there pretty cool this looks like mirrors possibly no something else and some other parts here here are some engine parts as well Not interesting then we have the next sprue right over here here we have more engine parts we have the front spoiler splitter part i think these is uh, go on the side there is the rear window if you want so the basic typical lotus t-frame don't get uh, t-boned in that car you will not enjoy that we have uh, headers right over here this is the engine cover which goes underneath the engine hood or bonnet. Here we have the all-in-one molded um, cooling system. And here on the side of the engine with some brake and suspension parts on it right over here. All very interesting indeed. Some parts look molded together and some parts look to be needlessly taken apart 
So it was a, certainly an interesting project. You can see this is not the standard V8, you know, General Motors car. They, they really had to think to make this one. Here we have the seats. They actually have a very quite nice moldings in there. Here we have the center console. Uh, steering column etc right over here pedals right over there here we have the door inners right over there another part which could be no it's not a plastic part here we are have a exhaust system right over here and more suspension parts as well these do look as I say they are all in uh, some need of attention some more than others as I said, not horrible. Not something where you need to go and get the angle grinder out, but you certainly need to be aware that there's some cleanup will be required. Then we have uh, the inside of the car. We have seen the frame, the T famous T-bone frame, and there's the underside. That's not very detailed at all. And uh, engine halves right over here. The Backside of the seat, we have uh, assembly of the belts right over there, and uh, valve covers, etc. Engine parts right over here. Some of them quite small, but yeah, this this actually doesn't look too bad, not at all. And then obviously we come to the iconic body right over here. We know the witch, yeah. All you need to do is flap your wheel sideways and go underwater. And uh, that's some sharp edges and stuff, so it needs some tender loving care. But it looks as far as the size is concerned, it looks pretty much in proportion. I think so. Handles are molded in right over here, and they need to be black, so, so that's that's what it is. But otherwise, very very nice. We should see the reason why you buy this kit is this part, and then all the others will just have to fall in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, the Lotus Esprit Turbo as we have seen it on the bench. Let's go back upstairs and have some final thoughts. And here we are, back upstairs with the uh, Lotus Esprit Turbo. Interesting, interesting uh, kit, as, uh, really. It has quite a bit of detail in there. I was surprised how much detail it has. Quality of the kit, 80s monogram. And uh, those of you who had 80s monograms kits before know what they are in for. So there will be some cleaning. I can guarantee you now already the fit will not be perfect, but it's not unbuildable and it is certainly acceptable. And if you like the car, you will uh, not mind to go the extra mile to have a go at it. I certainly will enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the review as well. Uh, give it a like and subscribe. I really would like that. And uh, greetings from Cape Town. Cheers.